Hi guys, this is just a little update video uh, about my Deep Space Nine runabout model build. Um, I tend not to make videos about my models, mainly because I'm really crap at documenting stuff. I really am. And I'll take photographs of the model as I go along when I remember. But for the most part, I'm, I'm really terrible. If I'm going to make a video, it'll usually be a video that's specifically about one particular thing. But as for doing one model start to finish and showing what I'm doing, I, uh, uh, no, I, I, I can't do that. I mean, I suppose I could if I needed to, but for right now, I'm blabbering. And let's quit blabbering and talk about the model. Well, the Deep Space Nine runabout, I've built a lounge section, a cockpit section. I'm not going to be putting the pod on the back of it. I like to keep it sleek. That's just the way I like my runabout. I programmed a an Arduino Pro Mini to govern the nav lights. Um, that was a headache. Oh dear me. Ah, oh, I, I, I was kicking myself, really kicking myself, because I spent ages upon ages upon ages trying to work out how you get the thing to blink, uh, to have LEDs blink in unison. Basically, mainly because you can only have like a certain amount of LEDs blinking in unison. Like I think it, it runs two per pin. And of course I needed four. So I spent ages upon ages upon ages working out the program and when I realized how to do it, I was just like, of course it is, you bloody moron. But anyway, enough about that. Let's look at the model and uh, I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so this is where the runabout is at. Um, right now, don't worry about these orange glowing bits because they're masked off. I needed to mask those off separate. I didn't change those for a different part. What I've done there is I masked off the front and then I thinned all the back with a Dremel uh, just to make it really nice and thin. Uh, the translucent plastic and I coloured it from behind uh, and the reason for that was because um, when you take off the masking, I've already seen it without the masking on, you can actually see the grill. Uh, it just just because of the density of the plastic. Uh, we've got the cockpit here, which has. Let me zoom in. Yep, I've got a little dude in there. I've got two little dudes in there. Uh, all the the chairs are in the co uh, controls. I forgot what they were called then. The rear back wall, the inside doors, uh, all that's in there. Uh, let me just turn this around. Uh, the stand, by the way, is. And, oh, you look, you can see his feet. Um, <laughs> I'm simple. Uh, you can see, obviously, I haven't sealed, seamed that yet. Um, just getting it together, getting the principal paint on it, and getting, you know, pretty much the basic colour. I'll just uh, mask off the rest of this and just fill all that and then sand that and then just match it. Uh, what else have we got here? I've got a couple of light leaks here and there as you can see. There's one right there. Um, this was a nightmare. I'm, I'm not kidding you. The, the, the nacelle was an absolute nightmare. Why they done it that way I don't know. But again it's AMT. So um, the warp grills don't fit. I mean you can see this, this light here coming through here. You can either put them tight to the front or tight to the back but they're not long enough to cover the entire uh, hole. Um, I had to re-pop this one because these grills are so terrible to put in that, well, y you're trying to match the left and the right and the top and the bottom. Uh, it's, it's crap is what it is. Um, how they put the seam vertical down there because you've already got this point where they, they join together, it would have made more sense. You could have just pushed these into the space inside and off you go. Uh, so let's have a take a look at the lounge. Interestingly enough, the base that I'm using for the runabout is actually the base that came with that Klingon Bird of Prey. Um, so, not wanting to throw it away, I cut a piece of brass tubing and put it up and there you go, you, now you can see the lounge. Got all the seating in there and the tables and everything, it's all lit up nice and uh, 
it all looks good. You can see the back walls and the doors and the bunk beds, all that. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the impulse engines. The impulse engines I drilled out and I filled it with uh, this stuff, which is just gloss varnish uh, from a Games Workshop. And then what I did, I went over it with the red, and you can't really see it from this angle, but they they they're quite bright. Um, how I done that was to light the orange and the uh, impulse engine with the same strip. So what I've got here is a strip of LED lights coming down on the inside. Uh, all the inside has been covered in foil. And then the reason why I used the strip lights down the inside was because I can tandem the strip lights for the engines. Now what I've done with the engines was uh, strip lights, you can see a sort of hot spot in here and there a little bit. Don't mind that because it actually looks like warp coils. Um, the strip light is white. Uh, coloured the Basset and coloured the... Uh, what is it? The warp grill. Um, and the light dusk inside here will be lighting up the nav lights. I've got to put a little bit of a... Um, fiber optic in there which is going to be mushroomed and coloured and the reason why I'm doing that is because I looked at the model for the runabout and it seemed to me that what they did with the model was to put white lights in and just colour them but you know there's nothing wrong with that um, but you can see the uh, strobes are looking good it's all coming along it's it's pretty much done and what I like as well is that if I knock the lights off uh, you'll see uh, if I knock, knock these lights off which one? yep that's it you can see that uh, the, the grills go to copper uh, that was just a light coating of copper on the outside I haven't grooved anything away or anything like that it's just a very light coating of copper uh, one from one angle one from the other angle to make sure that the top and bottom were covered and that's about it um, but she's looking good. She's looking good, and you know I'm gonna have to sand and see, like I said, see in these edges. Um, Got to put the phases on and the uh, separation. Another thing that was interesting to note was when I looked at the studio miniature. You've got obviously this back sled here, and the front section, and then the warp sled on top. And what I found with the studio miniature was that they have given them a coat of, well, it appears to be a coat of metallic uh, pearlescent flak. And this warp sled appears to be green, the front section blue, and the back section red. And I think that that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to just uh, not give it anything heavy, but enough so that you can see a difference because you can see the separation line around here where all this is supposed to just slide out um, so yeah it's coming along I've got you know obviously the more detailed painting to do and stuff like that but that's that's something for just sitting about I, I just it's my favorite part of model building which is uh, the paint but it's coming along it's getting there and um, hopefully it won't be too much longer now um, another problem with this model is the two halves closing this up the two halves oh my life they just don't fit you, you clamps if you if you're gonna build this model you need clamps and I'm not talking small I'm talking big big G clamps um, they, they're just really bad it's, it's just really really bad um, but yeah she, she's coming along looking nice and um, a couple of light leaks to take care of and uh, stuff like that, but for the most part, she's she's eighty percent done. I would say maybe 82, 80, 80, 82 and a half. That's a nice number. So yeah, that's what's going on with my runabout.